61 Coventry games, no goals. And he's missed it. Promoted back to the Football League only eight years ago. It is an incredible tale. The fall and the rise of the Hatters is complete. Luton Town are into the Premier League and Coventry City are in the bitter depths of despair. They've had some great moments, Luton Town in their history, but for 30 years and more, it's been a struggle to get back where they once were as the silver trophy will be handed over to Sonny Bradley and Luton Town are into the Premier League Massive congratulations Luton Town are a Premier League club how are you feeling right now? You look emotional I'm emotional, I, my thoughts now are just with Tom Lockyer to be honest Jules I am, um, it's amazing it's amazing for these supporters, amazing for our board, it's amazing for these players. But health is the most important thing and, and, and all I care about right now, to be honest, is knowing that he's okay. And physios have spoken to him and Carlton was on the phone to him. Carlton was really close to him. Carlton was on the phone to him just about 10 minutes ago. He's, he's talking, he's at the hospital, he'd be getting the best care. He's been so important for us this season. He's been an incredible player, an incredible person, leader. And I just hope that you know, just, it gets, you know, gets better quickly and he can celebrate with us. Luton Town are in the Premier League. Can you quite sum up your emotions right now? No, I can, yeah. Before, uh, I can't actually, I was, I was dazed, man. I was just celebrating crazy. And uh, now, nah, man, we've uh, finally done it for the fans, for the community, for the staff, for the players, everyone that's involved. Luton Town in the Premier League. Now everyone's going to be getting on to us about our, our, way, our way entrance and that. So you got to come <laughs> see it for yourself. I don't think it's sunk in yet. Still, still haven't sunk in, even though we're celebrating the changing rooms and stuff throwing beer on each other and sliding in the changing rooms, but I don't know when it's going to sink into my ice, but it just, I just can't believe it. Who's saying in there, like, we're going to be chasing Kevin De Bruyne and Salah and our next year? <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. You were there the whole way through with Luton, from yeah. the conference to the Premier League. You're the first player to do that. What does it mean to you and, and, and seeing all the struggles the club has been through to now get to the top flight? No, man, hard work, perseverance and belief. Got a belief that you know that you're gonna drive the club on, and uh, you're gonna run the leagues, and that uh, obviously each season that we played, we've tried to better the next, apart from one, and uh, we better than we did last season. Even though we had a lot of injuries, and that uh, yeah, man, what a way to uh, end the season. He's the heartbeat of the team. He has been for I don't know ten years now, all the way from the non-league to the Premier League. So we did it for him as well. You know that the gaffer, the gaffer mentions little things like you know all the time. Can we do it for Pelly? We'd love to see him be the first player ever to do that. There's been a lot of people, a lot of people, and I won't be able to mention everyone now that deserve a lot of credit for for the club now being in this position. We picked up on a club that was in a really, really good place. The board who have dragged this club back from, from the brink. There's too many people to mention. These fans who have seen some really dark times, I'm just so happy for them. And yeah, to say that we're in the Premier League, it's, it still feels a little bit surreal. How exhausted were you all out there when it went into extra time? Done, man. I was done. Eli was done. Gabe was done. Berkey was done. Even Ethan went down. His hammy was done. The man who was done, but hey, listen, Carl was like, listen, we've got to get through this. We are, uh, we're here now. There's no point uh, ending ending it on a low. So everyone, stop to the task. And I can't lie to you, some of the pennies were crazy, man. Top bins, one corner. Is Kenilworth Road ready for the arrival of Manchester City, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, and the rest? You got to ask them if they're ready for Kenilworth Road. We'll be asking them exactly that. Rob, congratulations. I hope you can celebrate. Thanks very much. Cheers. What an incredible day for Luton at Wembley. Joining me pitch side, Courtney Sweetman-Kirk and Jamie Mackey. Guys, we have just seen Luton Town get promoted to the Premier League for the first time ever. What a story. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And I, I've been to Canterbury Road many times this season, so I bet there's a few away fans can't wait to obviously go through the back of that stadium, go through the gardens. But look, it, it's an unbelievable achievement from the team. You know, Rob Edwards, the staff and obviously the, the hierarchy and I'm sure the builders that are probably going to be in now um, as we speak, starting the new stand. It's very tough stuff, isn't it? It is. I think both sides come in here, Jules, in this season. I think neither before the season would have expected to be in this position. But coming here, I think whoever won 
Coventry or Luton, it was a fairy tale story. Now it's Luton they've got promoted. Courtney mentioned, obviously, the work's on the ground that's got to take place, but how exciting for their football club and their fans being able to watch Premier League football next season. We joke about it, but it, it will officially be the smallest Premier League club in terms of the fans that it holds. Just over 10,000 at Kenilworth Road. There's a lot of work that's got to go into the ground to get it ready for the Premier League next season. But they won't care about that right now because they're celebrating and the fans are going to continue celebrating because this is a, a serious dream come true story, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. And I think actually, in, in part, it will have its own advantage in terms of making that a fortress. You know, if you've been there, how close the, the fans are to the pitch. And, you know, that can be a very hostile environment for players. So, yeah, there'll be certain teams going to, to Kenilworth Road and, and, you know, there'll be some trepidation about playing there. And, and as I say, I think that's a big thing for Luton. Uh, to, to make sure that it's a massive fortress for them and use that to their advantage. How incredible is it when you think about where this club have come from, the journey they've been on from non-league to the Premier League in under a decade? Yeah, I, I think the most amazing thing is even the years where they didn't actually get a promotion, Jules, there was always a little bit of progression each season. Even if it was in the Championship, they'd maybe finish a, a place above. So you could see a pathway for them. I think them getting to the Premier League was in their wildest dreams obviously they did so well getting through and um, a couple of the players have been on that journey with them which is also incredible going back to Courtney's point about Kenilworth Road I think that that's their best chance now to get results when we talk about the Premier League because obviously the, these are massive clubs they're going to join and you, you've got the opportunity to make it a hostile place to go um, if they carry on playing the way that they're playing I think um, that it'll be a test for a lot of Premier League defenders because it's going to be very different to what they're used to um, and what they've been used to this week and they've got to use that as an advantage. We saw today Wembley, massive stadium, they had their half absolutely packed out so it's going to be bouncing in a big queue for season tickets next season I'm sure. It's a really interesting point about the style of football Jamie. Do you think Courtney that Rob Edwards has to change something now they're going to be playing in the Premier League? I think to play in the Premier League, you've got to be adaptable. But I like the way they play in terms of, look, they do what they're good at. They're aggressive. They get in people's faces in terms of obviously being direct. They've then got the fair players. Um, and, you know, Adebayo, we've seen it today with, with his assist, the little flick over, then the, the little chop back to, uh, to play the ball in, obviously, Morris as well. So, look, I think there's always has to be that evolution and adaptability. But I think if they go too far... For example, in Nottingham Forest, where they're bringing in a whole new team and, and trying to bring in a whole new philosophy, I think that would be the wrong port of call. So, yes, they've probably got to be a little bit better on the ball at times, but actually I think sticking to their philosophy is something that they can't change too much, unless I think that they'll get rolled over. I think, I think going on that point, Courtney, as well, is Rob Edwards actually before at Forest Green, he, he actually played a really different style of football, and I think it was really intelligent from him coming in and assessing that actually this was a good squad of players and they were very well drilled before at what they were doing. He's coming in and added to that, but he wasn't radical with his change of style and, and implement what he did at Forest Green, where they probably were a bit more progressive, they passed the ball a lot more. So as a coach, I think he probably would want to go that way, but it's a fine balance to go, do we completely change it this summer or do we go with what, what's got us this success this season? Because I go back to Adebayo up front and, and Morris. For me, if you're centre-halves in the Premier League, you don't going want, there, you don't no, want no, to is, you don't want to take that out your side because they're such a threat. And um, there'll be a real handful next season for, for defenders. How much credit does Rob Edwards deserve? Back-to-back -back managerial promotions for him in seasons one after another with different clubs, Courtney. But, I mean, he came in earlier on in the season and he's taken the club to the Premier League. Is there a sense of irony in it that he left Luton's biggest rivals to come here? There probably is because, you know, at the start of, of, of his job at Watford, the job would have been promotion. He's gone and now done that with another club and as you say, the, the rivalry between the two. But I think the fact that he's endeared himself to the Luton fans, the way he has probably shows you what a good, good job he's done. And, and for me, I've, I've had the pleasure of interviewing him as well and he, he just comes across um, really well. I think he genuinely cares about his players and I think that's shown today unfortunate with the, the incident with Tom and obviously that our best wishes go out to him so I think you can tell he's a, he's a manager that, that absolutely loves his players and uh, it's wonderful to see and, and wonderful to, to see what he's achieved. How difficult will that have been for the rest of the team losing the captain in the manner that they did so early on in the game to dig in and get through this and, and get yeah, the motion? It, it's really difficult and, and I echo what, what Courtney said obviously our best wishes go out to to Tom and his family. It, it's never nice to see a player go down, Jules, when no one's near them. You always worry, so we hope he's okay. And 
to add to that, he's been their best player this season. He, he got player of the season. He got in the EFL team of the year. He's been outstanding. So I think sometimes you could see by their celebrations, they were holding his shirt aloft. And I think it probably did galvanise them when it, when it got tough in that second half. But um, the players have got a job to do, e e even if that happens. And they have to be adaptable. And, and they showed that today when, when they lost their leader. The, they, they all gathered around each other and, and they got the job done. Can't be easy for the players out here going to extra time and penalties in order to go all the way. Yeah, there, there was a lot of cramp, wasn't there? And, you know, you see the caffeine gels trying to get on board and, and obviously the, uh, the sports drinks. But, you know, I think we, we were saying up there, weren't we? Once cramp sets in, it's so oh, difficult wow. to get rid of. And there was all sorts of stretches going on. But, you know, again, that character, the determination within the squad to get through that, to try and decompartmentalise what's happened to their captain. But then... The biggest prize of all, is, yes, massive character within their squad, and you see that. And amazing to see the celebrations as we did. Yeah, to finish um, with penalties, Jules, you know, to get promoted to the Premier League is, is incredible. I mean, actually, the, both goalkeepers didn't really get anywhere near any of the spot kicks, and we couldn't separate the two sides over um, all that time in, in, in normal play. And we were thinking it could go all the way back round, and the keepers start taking them, but. Um, in the end, there, there's always there's always a team that comes out on top. It's really cruel, a tough place to be when you lose at Wembley. Um, I speak from experience, it, it, it's not a nice feeling, but you know, for Luton Town and their players, uh, what what unbelievable memories, and, and, and for them, they'll remember them for the rest of their lives now. Yeah, it's a fairy tale ending for Luton here at Wembley today.